Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob and AJ Apple. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth and Mr. Dab Scout. What's going on, guys? What's happening? Hey, man. Excited. Second week even seems even almost as good as the first so far. <laughs> well, technically, we're still in the... I mean, if you don't... Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, first, yeah, yeah. Technically, yeah, no, I know. in the first week, if you want to... But I get what you're saying. Yeah, man. Um, no, baseball's still rolling. Uh, we're getting some good and some bad performances. We'll get into some of those, uh, talking our, our early victory laps. Cause let's face it. We know you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't, but you are, <laughs> you so are you're, you got it right. You are calling your friend up. Told you chump. <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, so we'll share you with you. Some of ours. Uh, and some of yours, uh, we got some responses to Dap's uh, tweet about this earlier in the week. We got some of the face six pack people chiming in as well with that. Uh, but of course, before we jump in there, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, uh, leave those comments, leave those uh, five star reviews. We appreciate it. And um, still jump over to fantasy six pack. We know draft season's over, uh, but all access memberships still are worth it. You get access to our uh, rest of season rankings, dynasty rankings, prospect rankings over there. We've got, of course, our Discord where you can talk to all of us. And then we've got Dave Eddy and Chris Robbins, uh, DFS cheat sheet and stacks tools that, they, that they're building, our DFS projections uh, as well behind the paywall. And then if you play fantasy football, we're going to be rolling out a whole lot of fantasy football content here coming out soon. Uh, pretty much immediately after the draft, it's going to be, you know, all, all steam ahead uh, with with uh, with football stuff as well. So uh, get in on that membership. Go over there right now. The promo code F6P MLB 24 is still good for 15 percent off. So uh, jump in over there and, and join us. We'd love to have you. So. All right, guys. Um, are we ready? Oh. Yeah, it feels like there was a whole show already. Let's just uh, yeah. call it a day. Okay. All right. So. Thanks for thanks for coming, everybody. It's been good. <laughs> um, on to week three. We'll see you next week. Remember, five-star right. review for such a great show. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those good things. Yeah. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all yes, righty. Yes, so, we are ready. Um, we... We, I know that sucked. Um, so we're gonna talk. We're gonna start here with some some of the news of the uh, of the week. Unfortunately, we got to start off with uh, Yuri Perez officially getting Tommy John. Um, Dap, I, I, are you surprised? I don't think I am. I, no, I mean it. Look, uh, all of us armchair doctors were kind of expecting it to go this way. It didn't look good to begin with. Yeah. It kind of concerns me that we might be heading that way with the, you know, Bradish or, or something like that. But, you know, uh, but the, Yuri Perez was definitely on the, you know, if you're going to go to on 10 scale, 10 being super duper, like sure of things, I was like a 9.5. But this is coming pretty soon. But it sucks because he's such a talent. He and to see this derailed again um, with an injury just really sucks. I, I, I hope we get to see him pitch a full game, you know, full season full health and really see what what he has in store for us yeah um any any thoughts from either one of you on like kind of who's really going to benefit if anybody from from this i mean the the marlins are uh starting out at a historic pace not in a yes. good way um <laughs> oh and eight so that that's fantastic um but at any any thoughts on you know are we looking at maybe like a, a prospect coming up a little bit earlier than we would have uh, gotten them otherwise? Well, I think I think the key here is that the rotation's locked pretty much right now, right? I mean, I, I didn't think anybody was necessarily coming up right away, but I think the fact that we uh, 
we were expecting some of these people to, uh, you know, get called, you know, brought down sooner rather than later. I mean, Edward Cabrera still, you know, it has that right shoulder issue, but you know, they've had some good news with him. Braxton Garrett is another person. He's like two rehab starts away. So I don't think there's anything to really be act, you know, action on necessarily like, you know, here comes, you know, this rookie, but again, and also Sandy Alcantara as well, uh, should be coming no, back. They're, they're, they're injured starters. Sally, uh, Sandy Alcantara, uh, Edward Cabrera, Braxton yep. Garrett, and now Yuri Perez. Like, yep. oof, that's brutal. <laughs> and I think a lot of it has to do with the old home run statue that they took down. You know, we all remember the the amazing Marlin home run celebration statue that was disgusting there in center right field that they had. No, is that alone in that one? Okay, great. Uh, but um, you don't remember the awful? Okay. Not anyway, really. no. I, well, uh, I mean, right. I well, pay attention to the Marlin Stadium about as much as their fans do, and the fans don't go at all. So. All right. Mean, well, <laughs> I, I think I think the thing here is right now it's just kind of a wait and see. But for those people like me that were in like a deeper league that were we had to get that SP four, SP five on the Marlins squad, and we're kind of wondering if you know they were going to be brought down sooner than they were. Uh, at least we know we have at least a couple weeks you know, or a couple months before anybody gets moved around there anytime soon. Cool. cool. Uh, next up for bad news, Josh Young, uh, broken wrist. Initially thought it was supposed to be like four to six weeks. Now they're talking eight to ten. Um, AJ, they they called up Foscu, um, but they've got um, blanking on his name right now. Already, already there. Um, Jared oh, Walsh. Yeah. Or no, Josh Smith. I mean, no. Um, yeah, who's the um, Josh Smith is playing third for him. Uh. Uh, totally blanking uh, on his name. Duran. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel Duran. Duran. Yeah. So I mean, like, who who benefits the most from from all from uh, right? Josh it's, being it's, out I here. mean, right. I mean, Duran for sure because I mean, Duran was supposed to be you know uh, I mean Josh Smith's getting some starts in there as well, but Ezekiel Duran was somebody who we were hoping was going to get more play. Hopefully, get some. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, show the promise we expected out of him for such a long time there, uh, but. Uh, you know, it's it's horrible to see this regardless. Uh, you know, Josh Young, I too young for this to happen. But on top of that, I, uh, you know, with a wrist injury, let's all be honest here. Let's just say it like we see it, right? To me, he's just unrosterable for the rest of the season. Uh, wrist injuries have shown us time and time again, saps power, saps the ability to, you know, be a productive fantasy mm-hmm. player. He can be a productive baseball player, but for fantasy, this just basically knocks him out for the season. Uh, at least in my mind, unless he pulls a Bryce Harper and, you know, hey, shows us that it doesn't matter what you lose, what injury will just hit 80 home runs. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is not, this is not it. Are you at all interested in maybe in a deeper league, picking up Foscu, seeing if he can get enough playing time and, and can kind of stick here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. In my AL only league, for example, I had Foscu preseason to begin with because I was kind of hoping he was going to get. You know, if anything, short side platoon uh, work, but, uh, you know, he was going to be right in the bench there pretty hard. He looked pretty decent during spring training. And so, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hoping uh, Foscu uh, gets some playing time and shows some of what, what he's shown in the minors. I mean, uh, number five prospect for the Rangers. Uh, so he hasn't frankly, played yet. He's been, he's been caught up for a couple of games and up yeah. Tuesday, yeah. zero plate appearances. So there you go. Yeah, but I mean, 18 home runs last year, yeah. he, 84 RBIs, and then here's the key, right? 85 walks. The dude had almost a 400 OBP last year yeah. in 122 oh, games. Not there. I'm just wondering. No, 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 but I'm just saying, like, you know, for in. me, it, it, for me, it's like, it's this, right? When you got a guy with that good of an eye, um, and pretty decent, you know, power numbers, right? But never cracked 20, but still decent. With that good of an eye, give him some chances. Just go up there and make something happen. And you're 100 percent right. I, I'm just hoping they do exactly that. But yeah, he was not <laughs> having him come off the bench or having a real sporadic role. I was not interested in him. But now it's a lot more chances. Yes, absolutely. Even in a even in a moderately shallow league, right? right like 12 team or plus. I'm, I'm grabbing Foskey just to see what he could do. Yeah. yeah, I think he's worth a flyer. Um I mean, you already mentioned the OVP, and all he needs to do is just get the opportunity. If he starts getting a bunch of walks, well, he's you know pitchers are going to have to figure out how to pitch to him. 
And then, you know, he could do some more damage with the bat um, if, if they start missing and, and giving him shitty pitches uh, or good pitches for a hitter, obviously. But um, I, I like the idea of, of him coming up. He's got dual eligibility um, as well, I believe. I think he's second and third. Um, and yeah, yeah, depending, and yeah depending on your league. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, that could be helpful as well if you're looking for a plug and play. Um, obviously, you're probably looking for the third base since uh, you had Young. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, next up, a, l- a little bit of good news here, I guess. Uh, a little bit of fun news here. You have um, good news, Joe? The, uh, the Orioles yes. AAA affiliate team. Um, Put on an absolute clinic the other day, scoring 26 runs. Uh, Dap, do you have the box score handy by any chance? I, can look? I, I do. Um, just to give you kind of an idea here, uh, Kobe Mayo uh, collected uh, five hits, including 112 mile an hour double. Holiday uh, had four hits and five runs. Uh, his third multi hit game, no big deal. And could just. Kurgistad uh, uh, led the team with you know ten RBIs, no big deal. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah just uh, you know, just wow. nothing ish. Uh, but the the best part is if you just kind of look at just some of their additional you know averages. I, honestly, at a certain point, I almost feel bad. It feels like you have the uh, baseball game on easy. You have uh, six players with an OPS of over a thousand, uh, and only three players that didn't. And Robinson, I mean, get, I mean, just, can we just demote Robinson, the shortstop, the number nine hitter? He only had one hit on seven at bats. I mean, what's he doing? Terrible. Get him out. I mean, just, <laughs> just awful. Uh, he's the only guy that didn't have multi hits in the game. Uh, and only two players didn't have RBIs. Uh, just to give you a yeah, quick I'm going to share this here. Yeah. Sorry. I moved the, moved the banners around. Apologize. Um, no yeah. I don't know if you can see this very well or not. Oh, yeah. We can. Absolutely. Um, yeah, here, here, here's the 10 spot from, uh, there's an Instagram post apparently that I'm looking up here. Here's the, here's the 10 RBI. Um, yeah. What did you say? Six players over a thousand. Yeah. Absolutely maddening. Like I've never seen, I've never seen a box girl like this ever. Like as probably like high school, right? Like that's awesome. (laughs) this is like, this is like beer league softball, man. (laughs) What's going on here? The I only like the only thing I would point out, the only the only bad thing, right? Of in fantasy, right? If, because some people are looking at those next prospects, and now that Kobe Mayo's hit that, you know, the top fifty prospect ranking, Mayo has ten strikeouts and zero walks in his uh, so far this season. That's not great. <laughs> That's not great, Bob. Uh, yeah. You know, he. I, I love Mayo's power. I mean, 112 uh, mile an hour triple. Uh, I'm sorry, 112 mile an hour double and 107 mile an hour triple. But uh, if he's going to strike out like that, we're looking Joey Gallo esque, uh, you know, strikeout numbers. But yeah, uh, that's nitpicky. If we just look at this score, it's gorgeous. I mean, that's something that you print out as a manager, frame on your wall, and be like, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. Do we worry at all, though, that like these guys are just going to sit <gasps> here and just like feast on these guys and then like and it's almost like too easy for them and they're gonna walk into the majors and be like oh holy crap <laughs> like yeah. um w- wow uh did you, i don't know if you just saw that comment we have here we have yeah, two comments chad. from uh Ch- chad here uh mayo got his first walk tonight which is um, amazing and he goes they did slow down tonight nine runs yeah three more rbis and mayo ripped a homer of course he does of course uh after i just i'm sorry mail i didn't mean to say anything bad about you you're amazing i just was saying to watch out but you know what you keep hitting a home run a game i'll shut yeah. up yeah uh, my uh my co-worker was telling me about this and he's like yeah like honestly and that you'll not appreciate this it's like they they might as well just start playing the a's and oh, see yeah. see what no happens and <laughs> i i say the a's instead of oakland because in more right. news, yep. breaking news, dun, 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 they <laughs> are now moving to Sacramento and they're no longer going to be Playing called anything other stadium. than I mean, the athletics. With uh, with 14,000 seats, by the way, uh, yeah. which is pretty amazing. Uh, but hey, it's, so, gonna ma- it, it's pretty close to matching their new uh, Major League Stadium that they're going to get in Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Joe, AJ, I have a question for you. 
All right, there's no way the all these players are going to make it into the major league team, right? For uh, Baltimore, what do you uh, need? This is this is one of those amazing things. Like, what do you need to get? Because I mean, obviously, Holiday, you're never going to trade. Norby yeah. is close to. I think I think you have like Stowers, Mayo, and Holiday, maybe in the untouchable range. Yeah. Everybody's got a price. But what do you guys need? Because you could basically trade Norby right now for pretty much a frontline starter with almost any team. I yeah, I definitely think pitching would be the ideal get um, for them because yeah, I'm trying to think of like a that's it. I know. mean, maybe maybe I can't even say bullpen help because I, I thought say your bullpen is pretty, pretty rock set. solid. So and come next year, you're gonna get Bautista back. Um, I'm trying to think of like. Yeah. I, yeah, obviously I think, you could joke big. Like, oh, we need a Cunha. No, no way, right? Because and the Braves somehow, <laughs> yeah, like the Braves somehow would trade a Cunha, get you know, get like two of your best players, sign them to like one dollar twelve year deals, and then get a Cunha back somehow. I you swear, know? I swear yeah. the the Braves it's still managed like to fleece private investigators else. like finding dirt on these guys and be like, hey, um, you see what's in this envelope. This yeah. won't come out if you sign this, yeah. <laughs> like, right? It's the only thing that makes sense. Um, now, like you, you gotta, you know, I haven't dug around, but you've got to look at like the the teams who aren't going to be able to afford their players. Like, uh, go after like a Bobby Witt, right? Kansas City in a couple of years is not going to be able to pay a Bobby Witt. Wait, they have Patrick Mahomes money now. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, maybe that kind of thing. But then, like, then you it's so tough, though, man. Because, like, then you're looking at, like, oh, wait, where does where do all exactly is Bobby Witt that, really that much better than some of these other probably? And, but maybe like, that's it's it's so tough. Like, I I can't think of another minor league system that's been this loaded that it's almost a problem because <laughs> you're exactly. like, what do you do? <laughs> And that's what I was hoping you were going to say, Joe, because it's one of those situations where you could trade for somebody, but who sits? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. well, I mean yeah. like you trade, you trade for that's Bobby Witt. And, uh, I mean, I know Holiday's playing second here, but like, kind of short. Also, may, I mean, maybe that's what works. You slide him right. in second. I, there's, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of moving pieces. I, I mean, I think pitching isn't one of is probably not super deep for the O's. It's something they clearly yeah. Yeah. don't emphasize as much but like they've still got talent there but i think that could easily and obviously you know as bradish right you know injuries yeah. and we're looking at we were talking on um was it discord or slack i forget which one it was just all the different pitchers that are on the il right now it's absolutely insane uh, yeah um so the, the list of pitchers that are out there right now Yep. Um, it's it's like a, it's like three all star teams worth of pitchers, you know. Well, just like a, I mean, we just talked about the Marlins, right? I mean, look at the Marlins; they have yeah, you know, three all stars and a, you know two almost all stars. I, I think the thing is, is that pitching we saw last year and this year, you know, whether it be because of the pitch clock or whatever the case is, uh, injuries are on the rise. You can never have enough pitchers, yeah. but at the same time. Jeez, I hate you guys so much. Um, I mean, and, look, look, listen to these names. So John Lepresto started listening out. Uh, this was after the the Yuri Perez news. So we were just talking about it. So obviously Yuri Perez, Alcantara, right? We mentioned right. them. Woodruff, DeGrom, Scherzer, Robbie Ray, McClanahan, Dustin May, uh, and Jeffrey Springs, uh, if you want to throw him in the mix. Kershaw. Right. And then Corey Piper mixed in. Garrett Cole, Kyle Bradish, Gavin Williams, Senga, Shane Baz, and then there's more, like easily more. Like, well, that's nuts. Yeah. And so, like, pitching, I mean, yeah, right. we talk about injuries with hitting all the time, but man, the pitching injuries and like when they miss, I mean, it's Tommy John a lot of times and or like yeah. shoulders, and it takes a long time to recover. And so, yeah, I, I would say, like, if we're going to trade any of these guys, like, go get some, go get some more pitchers. <laughs> Or, yeah, you know, sure. I mean, like a Drew Rasmussen, too. I mean, you know, he's expected late this next this year as well. I mean, it's crazy when you start looking at that list. But again, on the flip side, you don't want to also then have a bunch of get your guys on that list. But yeah, I, I hate you guys. I mean, from a <laughs> from a real world perspective, I hate you guys. From a fantasy perspective, oh, my God, it's so exciting. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I still hate you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think that they could they could easily have you know, Stowers in at DH instead of 
Mount Castle. I mean, I I like Mount Castle. I think he's he's adequate. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn at first base. Oh. I mean that that I think is the weakest spot. Followed, if you have well, if you have Ryan no, O'Hearn, we've base. seen what he does in the Royals. We saw what he did for the yeah. A's or whatever, and the twenty five other teams he's tried out for. It's not it's not it. My, all right, all right. Sorry, we're getting pinged by our producer in the backstage. He's telling us to stop with the Orioles love. We get it, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. It does. All right. It's a lot, okay? It's a lot of fantasy so, stuff there. So we're going to go from, I, from one love it's hard, to another. It's hard hearing this being a White Sox fan, so please move on. <laughs> uh, so from one love to another, we're going to jump in here and start, continue with our yes. White Langford fantasy six-pack. Award-winning. Award-winning Hall of oh, Fame yeah. tracker. Yes. yes. Um, love love the graphics. Um, yes. You know, super professional. So yeah. the update, six for 25, one run, still zero bombs, three RBI and zero stolen bases through, what's this, six games for the Rangers? I think they've only played. Yeah, six-ish. Yeah. Um, not great. That sounds, not like great me, but, uh, I mean, sounds like me playing MLB The Show with my career. That's, your, that's current, your current career or like the MLB The Show career? The whole career. I'm not good. But, you know, the thing is here, again, early in the season, I know we're picking on Wyatt a little bit, but where everybody was drafting him as a sure thing, look, we're going to check back in a month and he'll have some amazing numbers. But it's our job to be truthful, to be muckrakers in this whole thing, and to show you the hard-hitting facts of Wyatt Langford's award-winning Hall of Fame career. Just a minute, Dad. You just like to tell people that they were wrong. Uh, I, I'm, I'm told I'm wrong a lot, almost on a daily basis, so hourly basis. So it's it's, it's nice occasionally. So you, you can share the almost uh, almost like a victory lap for a hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of wrong, that yes, Victor Scott. Mm. <laughs> oh man, but it wasn't as expensive, so it didn't. Look, um, if you bought Victor Scott when I told you to. <laughs> The last two picks of your draft, whatever. You didn't you, care. You didn't care. If you're one of the people, we saw some insane free agent bids. And we're talking like 75% of fab kind of crazy. I mean, NFBC had a $500 bid on Victor. <laughs> and how much oh, do you have to spend on that? thousand. Yeah. So that's 50% Pat. of the rest of your season on this dude. I mean, look. I love Victor literally Scott. Literally, only got a chance was... because somebody got injured in front of him. He yeah, he got he cut. Didn't... He got cut, <laughs> and up. then he got brought back up. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, the six runs are nice, but nothing else is. <laughs> well, the the, well the, the main thing here is that last number. That last number is stupidly low, considering. Well, on... I mean, he's I, obviously been I know. on base more, but like, right. he's only has three, he's only gotten three hits, so like. But if he literally scored every time he's been on base, he must have walked three times. I didn't, I didn't catch those. But oh, it's it's okay. I, I know math is hard for you, but yes, you if you can go on base more than the three hits, then you've walked or hit, so gotten hit. Has he scored every time he's gotten on base? I don't, I don't know. know how I'll, I'll call he him had, here in a second. Not, I'll find I out. Did yeah. not look it up. I was just yeah, kind of curious out. if you knew how many walks he had because I didn't. I didn't look it up clearly. Um, yeah. So he's actually got two walks. And one hit by pitch, or or maybe he came in as a run pinch a runner runner. replacement. Yeah, pinch or it was like a sack fly or something, or an error. Who knows? But anyway, yeah, pretty crazy. Um, he's only got five runs, unless he got one. Did he play today? Is that six today? I pulled these I, off of MLB.com. So yes. Uh, yeah, I have five runs in seven games. And grass, yeah, yeah, that's usually a day behind. And yes, yes and he grass, scored today, but he did go 0, 0 for 5 doing so. <laughs> hey, so. you know what, though? 0 for 5, you're still scoring. That's 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 Hall of Fame numbers. Yeah. Hey. I, I guess you'll take it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So we had a little fun on Twitter. Uh, Dap started this and... and I loved the idea, so we're gonna run with it. Um, our little early season victory laps, as I as I kind of said, everybody's everybody's doing it. Um, you know, Chad over here is, is commenting as well. Um, 
I hate to be happy about a player doing poorly, but I never understood the logic on chasing Victor Scott in a crowded Cardinals outfield while also fading the better version of him in Ruiz. I think it was a price tag, uh, yeah. but I mean, Ruiz isn't up right now, so I don't know what to say about that. Um, that that's, a whole, that, that's a whole show. That's a whole show and a half from Dap. So uh, we'll just let him uh, get on, on here one day and just rant. Um, all right. So <laughs> let's jump in here. So uh, Dap sent out a tweet earlier this week. Uh, asking, you know, who 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 you pounding your chest on right now that you you called right so far in this early season, and we we got some good ones. Uh, so fantasy six pack guys uh, jumped in here. Sorry, I had fun with the graphics. I don't know, I was bored. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of laughing because this is all in jest. Um, but Corey Piper, uh, Jaron Duran. So it, in our bold in our bold uh, picks. Uh, article that went out right before the season. I think he said something about Jaron Duran, like going 20, 40 or something like that, or some, I have some, something crazy like that, but to where he doesn't have a home run yet. He's uh he's definitely happy with the, uh, with the steals right now. It could easily lead the AL in steals, especially with Ruiz not up. Um, so looking good there so far, John Lepresto is, uh, is loving the Michael Garcia start here and me as well, because I waited a long time in the fantasy six pack uh OG keeper league. And um Michael Garcia is my starting third baseman, and I'm feeling okay. <laughs> so also an early uh representative for first keeper of next year's team. <laughs> absolutely. I'm pretty sure that was like around 20 picks. So yeah, that's that's <laughs> gotta be an easy one. Um, um we got Chad, who's who's listening here. So uh, he picked up uh, Abner Uribe, um, the closer from Milwaukee. Says uh, he was, you know, projecting him to be an elite closer. Tough to do, Chad. I mean, I know the injury, obviously there. Um, I'm guessing, and maybe you can chime in since you're listening. Um, it, it, is it just while Devin Williams is out that he can be an elite closer, or are you thinking like maybe he gets traded? And he can go be an elite closer somewhere else as well. Like that that's a tough call for me. Like, I don't know how you would have gotten that one without like projecting something else happening. Right. But um looking good so far. I mean, he, he's he's definitely pitching well. Um that do you want to take some more of these since this was uh your thing? Oh no, it's uh totally fine. Uh yeah, um uh, Red Sox rotation. I mean, all they're doing is throwing up K's, which is yeah. great. And I, I like the way you kind of pass that off to me as if I was slacking. Thanks so much, Joe. I appreciate that. Just let uh, you have your, have your due, man. No, it's okay. Red Sox rotation. Everybody's throwing Ks. Everybody's throwing almost no hitters. I mean, it, it, I love watching ex-pitchers kind of come back and become pitching coaches and, you know, kind of show the immense talent that, uh, and, and show kind of some of the different things that they did. And the new Red Sox pitching coach is... Uh, <laughs> obviously paying dividends and I, I think it's um it's, it's awesome to see andrew bailey uh then also connor right royce lewis um yeah it, it's the uh he was avoided so i can't type everything that they had ah, here, it was okay. that he not that he's like you know again kind of like chad like hate to be happy about it but i he was all he was not in on royce lewis especially where he's being drafted because sure. of the injury bug and then look what happened yeah okay i just so, uh that that was a little, I felt a little awkward there for a second. Yeah, but I'm um, glad that, glad you cleared that up. Thanks so much. And then Mike Carter uh, from, I mean, Mike Carter's pretty much writes, I think, on every uh, website, known to man, fan graphs, and everything in between. He called out Garrett Crochet early this season, uh, early, and he's also a White Sox fan, so that, that should tell you exactly how he knew about it. Garrett Crochet, we kind of were in on, uh, but you know, with that injury that he had, he had the pedigree he was awesome and he what he's done though uh you want to tell everybody joe about what happened with the braves you thought for sure hey that one start oh that's it gosh. yeah so we'll, so we have crochet later in this um in, in this segment but i guess we'll we'll get into it yeah let's just go so ahead my, my thing about crochet was after the first start i was looking at it like i mean 
who do you play? Like a uh, fantastic start. Don't get me wrong. Like, but everybody was like, Oh, I'm going to bid all this money on blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go get him. And I was like, ah, I'm going to let other people take a chance on him. Cause who is his next start? The yeah. Braves. The Braves. And I was like, nah, I'm good, dog. Man. And I was like, all right, everybody's going to pick him up. Everybody's going to start him. He's going to get rocked. And then it's going to be the quick drop. And then I'm just going to swoop in and go, thank you. I mean, he gets to go play a bunch of like NL Central or AL Central opponents, right? right. And so. And how that work out? He goes out and throws an absolute gem against, yeah. against the Braves. And there's no chance. Like he could have two bad starts in a row and nobody's dropping him for right now. <laughs> it's like, but he did it against the Braves. Yeah, I'd keep him too. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. That's 100%. Nuts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that uh, that's a good one. That is a good one. All right. So kind of segueing into the next uh, thing here. So we're going to jump into, and some of these are kind of our victory laps that we're mis- mixing in here. Um, but kind of talking about some of these good and bad starts and how to manage them, right? And right. so, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I was, uh, the, the point is here, right? Is that victory laps are great and all, and we've had some fun. But the the key here is, look, if you listen to us, great. If you don't listen to us, that's fine too. I don't listen to us sometimes. But <laughs> now that you've gotten yourself I'm into a situation, right how do you pivot, right? And how do you pivot early on? If you didn't listen on Royce Lewis, if you didn't do some of these things the Logan, a hopes, a hopey and things of that nature. We're going to help you try to dig your way out of some of that stuff. Safe face. Yeah. yeah. And uh, real quick, Chad did, uh, did comment here about his, uh, Uribe, uh, pick here. And so he said, I thought he was basically the new Devin Williams and that Williams was going to get the hater boot. Um, and then Williams got hurt and made it all that much easier of a pick. So yeah. All right. Fair. That's fair. 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 So, all right, let's jump over here to, we're going to start with some of the bad. And this was one of, uh, Kind of both of ours, Dap. Like the Ellie De La Cruz, like what was it? Pick 34, 27, something yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah, it was yeah. like it it just got out of control. And I get it. The the absolute like you know, the power speed combo is so like mouthwatering, man. Like it's like, oh man, the potential. He could go 40 40. Right. The dude's got to get on base though, man. Like he he's having issues. And and that was one of the things that that we struggled with. If you looked at his splits from last year, his first 30 games were absolutely amazing. The last what 70 games were horrible. Right. He batted what below like 210. Like it was it was bad. And so you know, I projected around like a 245, 250 batting average. Boom, there he is, 250. So uh He's got two stolen bases. He's actually been caught once already. I left that off of here, but uh, that's no. Thanks for not rubbing it completely in his face. I mean, come on. Struck out. He has struck out 12 times already in 25 plate appearances. That's not good. Um, That's, I mean, I'm in a Facebook group for fantasy baseball and, and like some of the guys like the joke on there, like, Oh, how how long until Ellie data Cruz gets called, you know, get, get sent back down. And I mean, he keeps playing like this. Like, I, I don't think it's that much of a joke, right? I mean, right. It, now, granted, ha, you know, had they had the loaded infield like the Reds were supposed to have, maybe it would have been a little bit easier to, hey, go down for a couple weeks, get right, come back. And, but I don't know, man. Like, so what do you do? Because you obviously paid a premium from him. Um, AJ, you haven't said a whole lot here. What, what do you do? Like, how do you, you know, kind of, you're not dropping him clearly, but like, no, I mean, you can't, you can't drop him. Uh, I, I mean, I think you just got to either deal with it for a little bit and maybe put him on your bench and hope that you have somebody else you can plug in there until he starts coming around. Um, you know, that's where th- this is like a perfect example of why position eligibility and fantasy is so important. Um, because then you have the flexibility to move him around or maybe look for, you know, a pitching matchup that you think might work in his favor. If if he's going up against somebody with a huge ERA granted, again, they probably only have one at most two starts right now, but I do look at matchups when it comes to pitching and try to try to play that game and, and make that work for me. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I mean, I think this is really what 
he was going to be. I mean, you guys nailed it with what you expected and projected for him. Um, maybe you try to dangle him and, you know, you might take a hit because of the cost. Maybe you can try to like sway whoever's looking at it and be like, Hey, this is what I paid. Like you would have done the same thing. Like you're clearly interested and just get out from under it. But I, I think it's still early. Um, I don't know if you really want to go that route yet, but I, I would be not uh, opposed to benching him at all. Until yeah, he I, starts showing something. I mean, right. and he could, you know, it may take another couple of weeks before he really gets ready uh, and, and kind of shows back into that form that we saw when he first came up last year. I don't know. That, what, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, you can't, you can't drop him, right? No, uh, no. Uh, but yeah, I think if you trade him right now, you're only getting 75 cents on the dollar at best. Uh, but you know, there are, there's a great replacement on your own team there, right? Uh, on your own team, on his, on his team, uh, where you're looking at Spencer steer, right. Who, uh, you know, is getting that shortstop eligibility as well. And is playing pretty, pretty amazing. Some other options as well, just to kind of, and again, I'm looking at, uh, our friend, Mike Curlin's, uh, MLB playing time.com website there, uh, for just kind of the analysis of, you know, where's everybody starting, but Bryce Terang. If you watched our show last year, you know I'm a big fan of Bryce Terang, <laughs> dual dual position eligibility. Uh, Orlando Arcia, okay, it, I don't know that Jose Caballero is interesting, but he's playing for the Braves, so you don't know when he's ever going to play. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, those would be my three kind of replacements uh, for right now. But uh, this this is way worse than I expected. I didn't expect him to uh, you know, return the value that he was having, but this is way below where I expected Elliot Cruz to be at. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll, I, I think everybody here in this in, in this uh, chat expects him to improve on on this. You know, he's he's going to get hot. He's going to hit some bombs. He's, he's going to get on base. He's going to steal a bunch of bags. That's yeah. what he's going to do. But you're going to have to go through a lot of these like ups and downs. Yeah. And right now, he's just in a down, and, and and that sucks. The one thing I also am kind of concerned with is the fact that i think it's against is it against right handers he's he's been batting like six or seventh actually it's against both uh he's been batting uh six well, against he's both batted right lead off um he, he did but now he's almost uh i'm oh, sorry i uh he is batting against um uh, let me let me give you the the actual um counts of how many times he's in wood spot uh, give me a moment please uh. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just, yeah, again, that's just something else you want to consider, right? It, it, especially right now, like, yeah, you don't want the guy that you paid what second, third round price for would right. be batting seventh. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> so, other than yeah. one start at uh, leadoff, it's been six starts at six in the six hole. Oof. Yeah. Not good. All right. Let's move on here to another one who I called out a few times. And uh, I forget what show it was on, but I, I definitely got a uh, oof on the from from our guests on that show. I do remember that, Mister Nolan Jones. I, I was like, I, I don't see it. You know, again, I think he was a bit of a you know. Look, he went twenty twenty last year. Um, he, you know, in in not a full season, right? And so everybody was looking at that. But man, his, his contact skills and his plate discipline didn't scream out to me as it being replicable. Like, right. it, yeah, maybe he goes 2020 again, but like, it's not going to be pretty. And everybody was paying up for that. Like, Oh, he'll easily go 25, 25 again. Right. Or, or this time out in a full season, maybe even better. I mean, Colorado is a complete disaster right now. Let's be honest with it. Um, but I mean, zero home runs, zero soul bases and a whopping one. Oh, three batting average. Well, I mean, here's the thing. We just covered two people that have the best home ballparks to be, you know, batters in, and they're both doing everything they can to hate their home parks. Maybe it's just too cold. <laughs> Maybe. I uh, mean, but, yeah, give them that. Sure. We'll give them that. But at the same time, at least Ellie's giving you some benefit, you know, at least with uh, like a couple stolen bases and, occasional 
yeah. uh, you know, things there as well. But what they're both doing and what they're both being consistent at is strikeouts. They both have a st- at least one strikeout every game, both those players. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Hey, Brooks, maybe you're right. Uh, you know, again, we're telling everybody to sell, sell, sell if they're in our leagues. If they're not, then we're telling <laughs> them to hold on and bench them. But yeah, please sell yeah, him. I- if- yeah, definitely not saying, you know, get rid of these guys, but it's it's just one of those like it's early, it's not good to see um and, and you know, really what does it mean? And, and it's sort of a little bit of here's here's our little early victory lap for, that we're taking and and look, I could look I could look real stupid at the end of the season like I did with Gunnar Henderson last year to where during the first two months I was like, "Yeah, see?" And then it was like, "Oh, wait." Wait. <laughs> so I mean, it can change like that. Right. Um but this was, but this is exactly what I was talking about, and and Dap, you agreed. Like this was, this was the concern. The same concerns with Ellie uh, as well. Like they're just, they're showing it right out of the gates, and that's like, I mean, I, this is why I didn't draft either one of these guys. So what we're expecting then is like the Bryce Harper esque multi home run game from both these players. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, eventually, yes. Um. Because yeah, Bryce Bryce was what two days from Over. from being on this list. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so yeah, very very soon, very 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 uh, quickly. I, I mean, that can he turn around. still did not really do much yesterday either. Um, There's all kinds of backlash about that game. It was supposed to be a one o'clock game, and then they pushed it to four. There was no way that game was starting at four with the weather here. It was a, a complete mess all day long, and people were pissed off. Um, so, yeah, the PR backlash has not been good for the Phillies on that, but Bryce Harper hasn't been good either until two days ago when he crushed three homers. And I will a take it. You put me into the top 10 of Rod Slam already. Yeah. So, um, some of the people that you can pick up uh, to help you out in the meantime. Right. Uh, Anthony Volpe, who, if you listen to the show, we expected a resurgent effort there. He's still about 60% owned uh, league wide. Bryce Trang again. Uh, and then, you know, like a Nick Martini. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else here who kind of, uh, again, Orlando Garcia. Uh, and of course, a Mike, uh, Mike Kale Garcia as well. But yeah, th- those kind of names would be ones that I would definitely pick for the yeah. um, a band aid option short term. So just another couple of comments here that I, I want to kind of follow up on. So uh, An- Angelo here is saying, uh, you know, in, in reference to the Brooks's comment about getting Nolan Jones back to cores, I uh, thought Nolan had a better batting average away from cores last season. Actually, no, but interestingly enough, the splits for him were pretty much dead even. I mean, 10 home runs away, 10 home runs for uh, or at home, sorry. <laughs> um, stolen bases were 12 at home, eight on the road, a 306 batting average to a 288 batting average. I mean, like he was good both, both away and home, you know, pretty much even too, like 52 games at home, 53 games away. So pretty good both ways, but like there was just some underlying metrics that really screamed out to me and, 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 and Dap and AJ that were just like, I don't see it repeating. Um, he's really got to fix a lot of uh, holes in his swing. He got he got really lucky last year. His I, I think what was it that we 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 looked it up and he was like he led the league in BABIP. Yep. Like during that time like, period, he led the league in BABIP. Uh, it was good. something insane. Oh, yeah, and, it was like uh, four twelve. <laughs> it's like a I've yeah. not, a four twelve BABIP is crazy high. So, um, but yes. And and Brooks, uh, all the Nolans are struggling. Yes, Nolan Arenado. I want to talk about him, but can't talk about everybody. But one guy who uh, I I was on the fence with. I think we all kind of were. Like it was very team composition draft uh, player, Nico Horner. And I wish I had known before, like a day before the season, that Nico Horner was going to be batting like six or seventh because there's no way in hell I would have had him ranked or drafted him anywhere. If he wasn't batting first or second, he's not valuable enough because right. he's not a power hitter. His skill is get on base, steal bases. If 
you're batting sixth and seventh, that's a that's not good for your stolen base total. Um, now he's not also he's just not getting on base right now either. Um, I think there's a little bit more hope for me with him because he's not like striking out as much. He's actually walked more than he struck out. Um, just not making great contact right now. It has been brutally cold in in Chicago, so we mm-hmm. will we'll maybe give him a little bit of a pass there. I mean, I think there was, I mean, there was like, it was like kind of drizzling. There was like icicles on people's like hair. <laughs> it was so cold. Um, Sarah Sanchez, I believe it was. She uh, she tweeted out like she was supposed to go to the game yesterday. Stepped outside, was like, Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna watch from my couch. <laughs> it was like 15 degrees. Like, no, nah, like we're we're good. We're gonna we're, we're gonna stay home. We're not we're not doing this. this is, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's just that's not baseball weather. So I mean, if you've ever tried to hit a baseball in the cold, it's it's not fun. <laughs> uh, it hurts, man. It really does. Yeah. So. I don't know. Uh, AJ, you got any quick thoughts on Nico Horner? Like I, I put um, him on here as a kind of an underperforming I, player, but any like major concerns with him? Yeah, because I own him on a couple of teams. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I uh, have him too. I have him on one at least. I know. No, I hear I, AJ. I, I'm not overly worried yet, but I am, you know, strongly, uh, questioning my choices here uh for for I mean, going after the occurrence for you not just a fancy uh, well, yeah i mean this isn't <laughs> the only thing that i'm questioning about myself these days but um yeah nico is has not been a bright spot for my teams um and i actually have benched him um on uh, at least one of them pretty consistently um until he again until he starts showing me what he can yeah. do um you know the the big thing is the steals i mean because he's not getting on base obviously he's not getting the steals mm-hmm. just like our, our boy victor scott but yeah. um i think that will come you know once uh, this cold weather passes whatever it is if that if that's it then great um you know get him into some warmer climates here Let's, let's yeah, go. I'll say this real quick about that. Like, so I mentioned how he was batting seventh. It looks like he's actually only batting seventh against right-handed pitching. He is batting leadoff against lefties. So maybe if you are benching him, take the chance against lefties that he's batting leadoff, and that's going to be his chance. Um, yeah. But yeah, it hasn't been. It hasn't been, not been a good start for him for people who were were banking on those stolen bases, which is pretty much you were banking on him for runs, stolen bases, and batting average, and you've gotten. Right. Mm-hmm. Gotten pretty much nothing. none of, of of any of that from him so yeah yeah um another guy here who i was sort of out on with the with the cost didn't really buy into it as much is uh evan carter and uh, we just talked about an ofer guy um this is an actual ofer guy uh i actually didn't even realize that because i don't have him anywhere uh when i pulled uh, up his stats excuse I, me sir i i i slacked messaged you that he was over but fine no did you Sorry. I'm busy. Leave me alone, Dap. Jeez. Expect me to read everything. Um, so he's at least scored five runs. I mean, he's walking, uh, so not horrific in OBP leagues, uh, I guess. Uh, but yeah, he he's gotta start making better contact himself. Um I mean I kind of think Evan Carter is, is going to be fine ish. Um, but I, I never really thought he was going to be the, I, I, I never really thought he was going to be the guy that a lot of, like, there were some people who were like all in on Evan Carter. I mean, like, you know, like 30, Wyatt Langford all in. <laughs> yeah. And um, I wasn't, I wasn't quite there with him, but, you know, it could he get you, uh, you know, 15, I, thought, I thought he was going to pull at least a 25, 25, 25, 30, you know, season. Uh, but, you know, this is definitely a lot slower than I lower than I expected even for this situation. But like you said, he is getting on base. He is walking, yeah. which is and he hasn't struck out every game like the last two people we've talked about. Yes. So, you know, and, and doesn't have any multi strikeout games, which is really interesting as well. He is also playing against lefties. Yeah, something that is a big plus for him. So, uh, you know, we were also when we we're highlighting him initially, we we're like, oh, he has no hits against lefties, 
and righties. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. and now it's all of the mm. above. Um, not not good here. Um, ooh. just no hits. Uh oh. Oh, we, we, we've got a uh, Angelo here. Uh, yep, he's sitting on my ten team head to head waiver wire. Um, wow. just dropped Langford and Torkelson in the past two days. 10 team leagues. I mean, I, I, I get it. Is that real that's, life? That's, that's rough. Uh, you know, 10 team leagues, that waiver wire is, uh, is, is busy. I, I do. I do know that uh, it's been a while for the yeah. 10 team league. Um, I mean, you, you're seeing guys just, you know, take off and, and perform well that are sitting there on your waiver wire, but dropping guys that you paid a premium for, uh, is, is tough what five six games into the season in my right. opinion I, i'd give them a little bit more of a leash um you know unless somebody drops somebody so like i i think i've seen some people talking they're dropping like uh the, this facebook group i'm in is, is really funny that there's i'm seeing guys just talk about players on the waiver wire that i'm like no like is that a six team league that doesn't make any sense um <laughs> But I have a Bryce Harper on my waiver wire. I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, Angelo, it's it's all good. Um, yeah, ESPN is a different beast, too, because it's a points league. Uh, I'm guessing that's their default. So that that is different, too. Um, so, yeah, sitting there and watching a bunch of zeros or even negatives for you know Oof. your daily player is, is tough to look at. Um, so. I, I, I get it. I do get it. Um, especially if you're, you know, you're looking at guys on the way we're like an Oswaldo Cabrera, who we're going to mention here later, just smash the ball. Right. And so you're going like, I, I, I'd much rather have him, you know, and in a 10 team league, who knows, maybe nobody picked up Langford for a couple of weeks and you can go snatch him back. I, I've seen it happen plenty of times. So um, moving on here. Did you throw this one in on purpose just because you wanted to talk about the A's some more? Probably. That. <laughs> that uh, no comments. No. Um, Look, Mike Curlin said on the show that, you know, when we had him on, uh, was it last week or the week before? He said that, uh, you know, he didn't believe Zach Geloff, uh, you know, made enough contact. And uh, I was ah, well, when he makes contact, it's good contact. Yeah, he, uh, that's a lot of zeros. I mean, uh, four hits. Yeah, but sure. that one of those this was a double. <laughs> but was it a hundred plus mile an hour double? No. Yes, it was. It was five hundred miles an hour. It turned into Doubt a fireball. It. Doubt it. Fireball. I have some <laughs> over here. Um, don't tempt me. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's not like much. There's not much happiness with Zach. I mean, he's maybe he's looking forward to playing next year in Sacramento. <laughs> AJ's yeah. referencing inside jokes from like 10 years ago, if not more. It's not that long ago. Except for him and me. Um, I yeah, know. man. I mean, like, look, this guy, this is one where, look, you probably drafted him late enough where you can cut bait, right? That, th this is the one out of everybody we've talked about so far where it's like, all right, the, the investment is you're, you're you're done with it like you're ready just to cut bait <laughs> um just go get anybody at this point um you're really not gonna lose much you know the, the hope was there that's why you drafted him it's not working out just just move on this is this is an easy drop for me um so. uh it's not it's not for me depending on the size of your league and what's well, off well, off of there as well Okay, uh, Dave, you know. Eddie, it depends. <laughs> well, I mean, look, you tell people to dro make a drop, and I mean, you know, then you have Angelo over there who's got, you know, uh, who did he just say? Oh, yeah, Bryce Harper you, and yeah, Bryce <laughs> Harper. Dropped, and, well, uh, on, on the waiver wire. got G Law, are you dropping G Law for Langford? I would. <laughs> oh, yeah. G Law for Langford? Yes. Yes. But, but G Law for on a normal 12 teamer, I might hold on to him just a little bit longer. Yeah, it depends. Um, I mean, hey, I I, I picked up Bryce Terang in a couple of my twelve teamers. I I, I make that swap right now. Whew, yeah, right? 
right? Love for Terang. Ooh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, Terang's okay. been sitting out there in a lot of waivers. People are real slow to pick up on him. Uh, yeah. And the I thing mean, is, we beat on that drum. We terranged that drum all last season. This should not be yeah, new to man, people, people watching the show. Yeah. People got fatigued with him. I, I get it. I did too. I kept looking at it going like, well, that's not real. And then I kept looking back like, is it real? Looked again. Yeah. In fact, right. you. Did, I think you he made a. Again. Fine. You made a, You made a couple of jokes about Terang. Like you're like. I did. Dap Terang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're totally right. I was waiting for you to call me out on that. <laughs> um. All right. Last one here oh. for uh, bad starts, and uh, we've got our only pitcher. Pitchers are pitchers at this point. They've had like what one start, maybe two. So it's tough, but Bryce Miller. Um, One of the top on pitchers him. dropped right now. I mean, he's being dropped everywhere. And you yeah. guys are all like, wait, which Bryce? Bryce, you know, uh, yeah. Bryce I you Bobby which Miller, Miller for which some Miller? reason. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, because you also didn't spell it right on the sheet. You you put. Okay. I, I was so. thinking of Terang. Okay. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah. you know, the thing is, is that it wasn't a terrible start. I mean, forum runs kind of. Sometimes happens earlier in the season, especially when it's cold and everything else. Uh, but it was crazy. You look up most drop pitchers, and Bryce Miller is right there at the top. It, once you get through the injured players, there's Bryce Miller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another one that we talked about pre show here, Bailey Ober, was I'm shocked that he's not on the top of that list because. Uh, <laughs> I definitely, I definitely rage dropped him. <laughs> I pulled an AJ. It was like 10 30 at night. I was rolling in the bed. It was just like, what the hell has happened? Drop. <laughs> it's like, I'll figure out who will be 10 runs in 1.1 innings. Oh, pit. yeah, it was awful. Oof. I looked at my ERA that day. It was like, I, cause I hadn't, I just looked at it. was early enough in the, in the matchup for the week. I looked at my ERA. It was like, what, how, how do I have an ERA of like eight? This is nuts. What in the hell just happened? And I looked it over and I was like, Bailey over. Nah, done. Click. <laughs> just dropped him. I'm going to probably regret it later, but it just felt good doing it. Like you don't deserve, you don't deserve to be on my team. <laughs> oh yeah. Anybody that had him in a head to head this week. You lost. I mean, sh you lost short, of your, ERA, short of your other players coming in, you, you're getting killed in the ERA and probably yeah. your whip as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. No, not good. Um, we just need to have like a permanent like loop of, it's not good, Bob. Um, yeah, not good, Bob. And you know what? We could just start doing the award. We have Hall of Fame tracker, and then we could have the Uber of the week, the rage, <laughs> the rage drop <laughs> rage of the drop week. Of the week. The, no, that would. No, we should just name that award after AJ, the AJ Abagarth rage drop of the week, because he rage drops everybody. everybody. That's there is no out. one safe. From is there anybody drop. in your league named Angelo? Because I think Angelo has some of the people you rage dropped already. Langford and Torkelson in one of his leagues. <laughs> no. um, oh, I'm trying to find my... Uh, he's saying, uh, oh, remind me, I dropped Stanton too. I mean, yeah. Oh, right wow. And, and BB and Pepe out? Wow. Uh, oh. I'm not dropping BB. No. No. Or, or, Pepe, Pepe uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he come on, great. man. Believe in the he Tampa magic. Start. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, dude. The, the Rays, the Rays starters, uh, had a rough first go of it. Most of them did, honestly. Um, they probably, they probably saw their Eflin came back and, and threw a pretty nice game. So, all right, let's move on here. Sorry. Um, let's talk about some good starts. Oh, yes. end with the good, right? Usually, end with the bad. I don't know why I say that, but, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. And it was it's all systems go full steam ahead. I was gonna jump in on that earlier, but I just I lost interest. But then it just stuck again. So sure. Whatever you Whatever. said, all steam ahead or something full, Damn, full whatever. steam ahead. No, no but you thing. said all steam ahead, and I was like, ah, oh, uh, whatever. Jackass, that's wrong. Made it from others. <laughs> um so, Logan O'Happy, let's go. Catcher, sure, man. So currently Logan. leading all catchers in the MLB in OBP, second in batting average. Mm -hmm. I mean, we 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 were on this one from the get-go. Uh geez, just amazing bat the ball skills, especially for a catcher. Yeah. Um I expected more power. It's early though. It'll yeah, come. Yeah, it's it's early there. Yeah, and uh 
But at the same time, where's he going to go? I mean, he's nobody's going to. that higher in that lineup, right? They are so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are horrible. He's <sighs> batting seventh? Why? Actually, he might be batting eighth. No, he's down at, uh, yeah, he's, no, he's seventh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's seventh or eighth. Um, he's you know, ahead he's, of look, another former a, Philly, Mickey Moniak. <laughs> Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of head scratchers exactly here. There's also metal. Louis, Louis Renhiefel, not even you know. playing. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean, I don't. I don't know what that. they're doing there. I mean, he's batting behind uh, Brewery. Fine, I guess that one. Whatever. But Aaron Hicks and Miguel Sano should not be batting in front of him. Excuse me, sir. Aaron Hicks was. Well, let's let's be honest, right? Rendon's going like to be injured on opening day. Rendon's out for the season and probably another week. Uh, and yeah. I, I mean, so they're going to move somebody. Uh, yeah. I, oh, uh, I hope he should be definitely in the, you know, six hole at the lowest, maybe the, you know, but with these know. on, with this I, on base skill, I mean, like he should, I agree. He should be at the top of the lineup, second, but he should be higher. First or second. Definitely. I think he should be five. Yeah. Five if, is, if I, if I were, yeah, if I were making the lineup, I'd probably go Chanel. Maybe Neto, and then uh, you know Ohopi, and then have Trout, then Ward. But who knows? I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I, I mean, Jamie's asking if we do start sit shows for baseball. Um, sure, why not? <laughs> you can jump in our Discord, Jamie. Yeah, who uh, who, who is uh, now a proud writer hopefully proud writer of uh fantasy six pack so look for his stuff over here helping out steve with the uh, idp side and then some uh but yeah we uh if you guys want to start sit advice i would suggest jumping over to our discord and asking us daily start sit questions over there uh it'd be too tough to do like a daily show for anybody i think um but it's uh we should do an hourly show hourly show for start sit sold uh chad saying if joe lets me the if the people want it i mean I, we got a lot of dfs advice i mean we'll we'll talk we'll, we'll see what wow happens. look at this this is how you this is how if you want to ever bargain or negotiate with joe bond you wait till he's live on a show and you just start throwing him a contract <laughs> advice i like this i like this yeah no pressure um <laughs> So yeah, great start here. Uh, he was one of the. I mean, he he was like, he was buried in the in the catcher rankings for some reason. Yep. Like I I got him in every league I'm playing in because I just waited and yeah. I would take him like four catcher spots over where he was ranked on every site in every other rankings. It felt like, and our cheat sheet loved him, and I was like, yep. I just grabbed all the shares I could. And I'm loving it right now. I mean, I wish I could get a little more power, but I, I do expect that to come. I think 25 home runs for him is is easy. Um, it, it's very attainable. I agree. So yeah, I I snagged him as my as the last catcher in my my 10 team ESPN league. Um, like I just watched it, and I'm like, all right, X amount of people already have one. Where when's this? Yeah, you know, when's it gonna drop? And I was waiting until like the 20th round. And then the last couple people grabbed their catcher and it's like, okay, I'm the last one. I was like, oh, Hoppy's mine. Um, like well, I was you and I were on the phone in something. the, uh, on the fancy six pack yeah. keeper league and you had your catcher. And I was like, there's only like two people who don't have a catcher. Uh, maybe three, including me. And you were like, well, I'm thinking about taking a second one. And I was like, you would. So I had to take mine a little bit earlier than I would have. And then I took him and you were like, oh, that was the guy I was looking at. I was like, I knew he was. So, yeah, um, because we were both using the same cheat sheet. So, uh, yeah, well, the the downside, too, is that I could have drafted uh, Campusano and then gotten another 18 points just from that. Like my week one is already over in the ESPN. They counted the the old series through Sunday. That's such and a weird. I was like, what the hell? It's like, okay, five games. I, I guess that works. Um, but yeah, so I, I randomly, like, I was in a lead because I had Manny and Kim. So it's like, okay, I'll take that. Work. Not when Evan Phillips, but yeah. All right. Poppy. Don't um, do it. That's what it is. 
I don't even name the player. Don't do it. Sorry, go ahead. What? Uh, Oswaldo so Cabrera. Do you, oh, do sorry. You want to name I'm the player? sorry. Go flashbacks. Ahead. Sorry, flashbacks. Oswaldo Cabrera. Look, you know, everybody's so happy with him because he had some game tying and game winning home runs. Everybody's like, oh, go get him. Don't. <laughs> like, don't even. He wasn't even like startled starting, I think, after like. The second month last year, he's starting right now because of some injuries. He's not this good in any shape or form. He's a high strikeout, low contact player. Don't do it. Don't do it. One more time, just for the kids in the back seat. Don't do it. Yeah, I it, like if you do pick him up. I mean, so like the second it. he starts getting cold, you drop him. You pick up somebody else. Like ride the hot hand, sure, do your thing. But like it's already starting to, you know. 0 for 3, 1 for 4, 1 for 2, 0 for 4. Like, it's already getting there. Birdie's now starting to get mixed into the lineup. Like, yep. it, this is ending. Like, it, it was you, a cool you, you your, baseball you story in week, you know, in March uh -oh. 28th. In March are we going to yeah. get a. Uh, a oh, yeah. We're going to raise here? tweet. We're raise tweeting. He's yes. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not true because Osvaldo Cabrera has a soul. But uh, oh man, uh, this sprite are is crazy sure? right now. Are we sure Where's your about voodoo this? doll of uh, of Gavin Biggio over there, like stabbing him in the legs, like trying to get like what is going? On? You have this hatred for Gavin Biggio. I heard on sports radio Here today somebody's like, That's this guy Gavin Schneider was playing for the Blue Jays and he's really good, and then they don't play him anymore. I was like, yes, exactly. Oh, anyways, uh, yeah, I uh, saw a highlight of Schneider the other day, and I thought of you immediately. Yeah, he hit, like, they yeah. they didn't play him in the game. They put it. They put Schneider in the game, <laughs> nice. and he hits the game winning home run. Yeah, like if that doesn't, they're like, nah, we're not going to start you next week. That uh, next game, we're definitely not starting you. Like, what yeah. else does he need to do? <laughs> you you won the game for us. <laughs> yeah, hey, sit over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you left bench now. That's it, that's enough out of you. That's enough out of you. You go sit over there. Yeah, yeah. it was all a barrel look. Need I don't you to I, do that. I don't mean to sound all angsty about him. I'm just trying to, because I know nobody listens sometime. Don't nobody do it. Nobody listens <laughs> sometimes. Those are like my kids. They don't yes. listen sometimes. Uh, but yes, just sometimes. to make sure that you don't have to listen to a bunch of analysis, don't do it. Let somebody else have that headache. You don't do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Chad, my favorite move of the oh, year God. was getting Cabrera for a dollar on the 30th, dubbing him later that night for Blackman and watching someone pay two hundred dollars oh. for Cabrera in the next round of fat. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, that is that is overreaction. Uh overreaction Sunday night, if uh yes, if you ask me. So yeah. Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, all right. So, all right, next one. Move on here. Mike Trout. So uh, I've done a couple okay. of these guys. So Mike Trout's interesting, right? Because everybody was like, oh man, Mike Trout. Like, is he worth the fifth round pick? Is he worth the sixth round pick? Whatever round he was going in, right? Um, we all were kind of like, like I, I've I've had buyer's remorse for years with him. I, I you know I bought him at like a second, third round discount last year, whatever it was. Thought it was good. Um, this guy's just been hurt so much when he plays he's amazing we know that right i mean clearly um he is the angels offense <laughs> um let's be real like Ave's good tyler ward's doing okay but mike trout is it really when it comes to like like really good fantasy production here um i you know he he's gonna be good when he's when he's there. Um, he's not gonna run as much, although he does have a steal already. Um, it's just a matter of how how long can this guy stay healthy? I mean, he I don't know. Like I was watching him like the last couple of years. I was like watching him. He is so like he's so thick, man. Like he's just big, bulky, like linebacker type build. He runs real stiff. It's like. What did I come back into? Uh, he was just talking about how thick Mike Trout was. Go ahead. <laughs> thick and stiff is all yeah. I'm here. And uh, uh, thanks for going out, AJ. Um, but like, kind of rage drop. I wonder, about? like, if you know, he just, you know, like, lacks 
and the reason mobility. why he gets hurt all that like lacks the flexibility that yeah. he would need to stay healthy a full season, right? And I mean, he's oh, yeah. so aggressive, especially playing center field. Um, like, and so I, I look, you're gonna you're gonna love having Mike Trout on your team, even if you pay the fifth round price for him. I just I still worry that he's not going to stay healthy. I, I personally would be selling Mike Trout. If somebody wants to see this good start from him and buy in on him, I would be more than happy to give him away right now. I don't know. What do you say, Dap? If I got Mike Trout a fifth round, that was that'd be I'd be I'd be playing that as a win. I, I he was going third round pretty much everywhere I was uh, I had uh saw him. <laughs> But uh, he was not that. I, no, I know. No, I, I agree. Uh, but you know, we had talked about Mike Trout being a guy that's going to give you some, maybe some good average, some OBP, some power numbers, RBIs, maybe who knows if the angels, uh, but you weren't going to be able to get five tools and the five, you know, the five category uh, outfielders, we we just were listing them like, you know, Acuna and, you know, boom, but Mookie Betts. And we just kept going down. Uh, people that had uh, these five categories when you have just so many people that are stealing as much as they are taking a Mike Trout now is almost a detriment to you. But if you drafted them already, sunk cost, you know, you're, you're, you're in it now, right. As long as you can, like, and I, I think Joe's got a very valid point. The way you can really do, do great here is turn Trout around for a, Frontline starter, I mean, or two, you know, type of situation. If uh, you can, you know, get him to have another one of these two home run games or another one of those types of things, strike now, you know, get somebody incredible uh, that maybe had one bad start as a pitcher or two of these pitchers because he's inevitably going to get hurt. It just sucks that I have to say yeah. that out loud uh, because from a baseball fan perspective, Trout's just awesome to watch. Oh, it's amazing. He yeah, went, yeah. His went. ADP overall between all the different sites combined was 56. Wow. Uh, a low of 67, a high of 38. Uh, wow. 38 was CBS, which is kind of an outlier. Like it was normally in the 50s on every site. Um, so those two sort of like bounced back out, which is weird. But yeah, he went he went 10-1 in my ESPN again 10 team league. So. <laughs> That's that's crazy low. Yeah, ten, it was. Round. I feel like people just kind of forgot about him. Uh, or ten one. Like was that a keeper no league, and you just had a, skipped no. a bunch of rounds? Or nope. Wow. <laughs> I yeah. I was like trying to track him down. I'm like, no, he had to go. Wait, where the hell? Where did I, where did he go? Okay, if you get Mike Trout in the tenth round, just keep him. I mean that that sun causes nothing. <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a free agent. But yeah. wow. Yeah, um, but pretty, yeah, no, point that out. Another crazy. superstar here that's having a good start that you know everybody was sort of kind of questions about Fernando Tatis. Um, I kept moving him up my board as the season got closer. I just kept looking at his skill set and what he can do. And we're talking about power speed combo guys. And look, he can hit for a pretty decent batting average. Last year wasn't awesome, but I thought the skills were there. The underlying metrics say he should have been better. Man, I kept moving him up and kept moving him up. Uh, almost put him at like number four overall. Left him down at like six, I want to say. Right. Um, but look, three bombs already, two steals, 303 batting average. Um, he's only struck out five times. He's walked three times. This is This is the start of a special season for Tatis. And yes, he's had more games because they played that 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 uh series over in Seoul with with LA so that you know that skews the the counting stats a little more, but it's two games. Um I I think with with Tatis this is you know this is the Tatis that we first saw like when he broke out and came up and was just phenomenal and then you know, he lost time to injury and, and PEDs and whatever else it was. Like, it just, it ruined him. But now he looks like he is back. And, you know, this was a this was a bargain pick. I still feel like he went first to second round in, in my larger leagues. Um, 
just but he was never uh, but in those leagues aj was he ever in discussion for the first two or three picks no no right, he wasn't right. Um, As opposed to before, unless right. it was a keeper, I think well, your sure. ESPN like leagues because it's points, I guess his ADP was 16. Yeah, wow. um, he went, you know, he was third round, 10, 9, 10, round. 8, 9 ADPs. Uh, you know, I was, I was, if I had had like a six, seven pick, I probably was snagging a Tatis there. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as the season but, got closer, I just kind of was, I was, I was buying into it again. We told everybody last year that Soto does not make anybody better, makes them worse. So as we knew, so when Soto goes to the, I'm kidding, obviously. Yeah. Soto going to the Yankees, you know, we, we just knew Tatis was going to flower. I mean, look, last year was a bumpy, a bumpy season. Uh, I don't know what else to put it, right? Yeah. Suspensions and everything else. Uh, I think he just had a normal off season, was able to play, not have as much kind of spotlight on him. And nobody really, you know, has the expectations that they had last year for the Padres. And I think Tatis is just thriving in that. I don't yeah. think he thrives so much in kind of that Yankees esque environment where everybody's like, you know, needing to get updates twenty four seven. I think he does yep. better when he's kind of forgotten about, hated on a little bit in those types of things, and and that's where he really goes crazy. Yeah, I think uh, I I think he did go a little earlier in the GF f6p league because of keepers but other than that i mean again espn league he was the three nine pick and he was the ninth outfielder taken <laughs> um we have four outfielders in that league so that i feel like that was kind of a value for him um i, I kind of wish that i would have grabbed him instead of freaking nola but i think nola will be okay hopefully <laughs> he better freaking be um, I mean, I know you have an, heard my rants on Nola. You clearly I weren't have. listening. I have. Um, going, going back to things that we said, speaking, nobody listened speaking to. Speaking of another <laughs> rant, um, I, I'll oh. just I'll just throw this out there now while we're um, well while I'm about to waste time. Um, Luis Castillo, we we should have put him in the the bad starts. He has been absolute trash right now, um, and and I hate him right now. So I feel like he, that he's, is nothing. He's one more. He is one more bad shit start away from a rage drop. I'm telling you right right now. I want to have a or live a, roll, a rage trade. I need to be in a league like that because I'm just not. <laughs> uh, but I will say this, um, and I, I don't have the stats pulled up to prove this, but I want to say he typically starts slow. Yes. I, I, yeah. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, we actually we actually talked about that. Is that he is that. not good in the cold cold weather months, yeah. uh, and it's really we, it was really kind of crazy that you know obviously he's in Seattle, but uh, he's yeah, not no, good in the like, cold weather months, so and he all uh, summer, <laughs> all, all season. What? Yeah, so you know that's kind of one of the key things with Castillo that that was interesting yeah. that I did you know during our off season shows that was one of those I was like oh I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there was a yeah. I mean I feel You're like there was Castillo. a picture a few years ago that was kind of the same way he was like an ace but like always this horrific like first month month and a half and then it was like oh there he is um that's castillo so uh but yeah tatis looking good um moving over here brian hayes one of my other uh one of my other sleeper picks that i liked um doesn't have any steals yet doesn't have any home runs but everything else is looking real good. Um, he's he's looking like he's starting to finally put it all back together. He's healthy. Um, yes. I mean, he's just got to stay healthy too, right? But, I mean, right. looking like he he's going to be able to, you know, if he can stay healthy, looking like he's going to have a, a pretty nice season as well. Um, I think we can just move on from that one. Uh, to the guy that we talked about a little bit earlier, Garrett Crochet. Um, That's... I... I, I I like, ate my own words here with with that one. Uh, I, I mean, come on. Who nobody actually, who nobody. actually thought nobody. he was going to do that against Atlanta? I mean, no, no way. I mean, I, I mean, guess he Detroit, gave it, fine. <laughs> yes, but, Atlanta. But look at those walks. That's the key, right? The guy is not just striking a ton of people. He is not walking anyone. Yeah, uh, that's just amazing. I mean, yeah, you're right. Tigers, sure, but Atlanta? Are you kidding? And I'm actually kind of shocked with his limited pitch 
count that he's going to have this year, like limited mm-hmm. innings, that they let him go six, seven. Like, I'm shocked they didn't, like, they don't just put a cap of, like, five on him. Right. <laughs> I think um, it's because he's going, I mean, let's be honest. I think he's going so darn good. And who the heck are the White Sox going to ride instead? They're True. like, we need somebody to. True. We got to get to 162 games, guys. We need somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you're right. Uh, you know, he's got an innings limit coming up. Uh, I think we looked, I think his high number of innings was 60 or 70. So, yeah. you know, 20% of that, he, he's right around 100. But at the same time, I mean, goodness, great. Three hits against Atlanta. Wow. Braves? Bold move. <laughs> There's no chance I would have done that. Wow. Zero. Angelo I mean, I is a better I man really than me. I had the chance. I had him queued up and went, no, he's got, no. The, he's got the braids. I'm not going to start him. Somebody else will. He'll get wrecked and then I'll pick him up. Yeah. Fair to say yeah. he's still on that person's roster, not mine. So, <laughs> oh, well, um, but yeah, this, I mean, what do you like? How much of a leash do you give? somebody like this who really like, yeah, he's had, you know, he's had pedigree, like he's got the skill set, but like doesn't have really the experience or like the history of performing like this. Like, well, I mean, if he goes he, out and gives up a, a Bailey Ober type start next, like <laughs> how much of a leash you give him after two starts like this? I mean, he was a top prospect, definitely, you know, two and a half, two or three years ago. I can't remember when he was considered, you know, going to, he was, he was definitely somebody I was considering, you know, there uh, in some of my dynasty leagues. And then he got hurt. and He just it looked like he just wasn't going to be the same. Uh, he was pumping some pretty fat, you know, he had a lot of velocity on his fastballs. I was going to say a lot of fast on his fastballs, which is stupid. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he has that. But you're absolutely right. I mean, you, this is way out of the realm of what I expected uh for him even with all the other kind of uh you know um scouting reports we had on him and things of that nature to see this is just tremendous but i would be selling on him so quickly to anybody that would give me you know 80 cents on the dollar for him because you probably have probably three out of the next five starts before you start either seeing some type of usage issue or some type of uh you know if you're in aj's league you can go get luis castillo right for, for in, in another week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, Garrett, you can't go anywhere Garrett but down from here. I mean, his name says it all. You know, he 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 wants to meet new friends. He wants to tie some yarn, and that's how you do the scarn. Yes, crochet, cat's cradle. Yep, you're welcome. All right, last so one man. here, I believe, Jason Foley. Um. Yeah. My name is Jason Foley and I pitch in a van <laughs> down by the river. Um we all thought we knew who the uh closer was for Detroit. <laughs> we were wrong. <laughs> nope. It, it is not Lange, it is Foley. Um and what does he got? Does he have three on the air or all, for some reason uh, saves didn't show up on this? Shelby Miller's got so you know, here's win, here's the thing though. Two. We are wrong. But we're going to be wrong next week and the week after that because yes. they have Chaffin, they have Foley, uh, they have you know Lang. It's it's the Tigers bullpen was a mess. We talked about that right uh, previously that it's a mess, but it's one of those where whoever is the closer du jour always seems to get twenty five plus saves because they don't ever score a bunch of runs. But I still would not be touching the situation if I have Foley in a. You know, I'm writing that till uh, you, you can't, but I'm not spending a bunch of fab to go chase them. That's the one thing, because I just don't know how long that's going to be the, the case there. Uh, so far, so good, but it's the Tigers, and it's the, uh, but I don't how, know. Like, how far, like, Lange is pitching in, like, the seventh inning now. He's not even, like, the main setup guy. It's baffling to me. Like, what happened? <laughs> Like, I don't know. And the thing is, uh, you know, yeah. some of these, uh, some of these other, um, you know, cl- people that actually follow closers and bullpens, which they must all have gray hair right now, are, are saying that Fulton's data is, you know, the usage data is pointing to him to be a traditional closer. And, you know, they're right. But, God, how did that happen so quickly? Like you said, right? Like, uh, and how did everybody miss so badly on this? I, I have to think that Foley has some blackmail on the GM. 
um, of some sort uh, to make this make sense. I just, this whole situation is just really I mean, odd. Look, but look, I, I'm, look, I'm reading through Closer Monkey right now. And, you know, they kind of go through spring, not every start, you know, or, right. or every outing, but like, it's basically like, you know, Lane just supposed to be the the the, the closer, right? right? He retired the side in the seventh, right? And, and if you're pitching in the seventh inning in, in spring, like the, that doesn't really matter, right? Oh, he right. pitched in the sixth in, in spring, right? All these other guys kind of came in, mixed and mashed. It didn't really matter. Um, or even pitched ahead of him, right? So like in the fifth inning or the fourth inning, whatever it was, right? And then it was just like opening day. It was just kind of like, oh, yeah, they just didn't use him. They have no idea why. <laughs> and then the very next time they had to use him, it was in the seventh inning. I was like, what? <laughs> it, and it's almost like Lange was so like discombobulated. He like came in and it was just, he got blown up. Yep. It, <laughs> but you know, we we saw we saw the Lang blow ups last year too, right? Uh, yeah, but. Yeah. We've also seen that with almost all the Tigers closers since the history of Tigerdom. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just one of those situations where everybody thought they had it. A, a, and the Tigers like, no, nah, you don't know anything. We're going to show you. Kidding. We're going to show you guys. <laughs> but yeah, so Jason Foley was definitely huge on all the fab fronts. Uh, people were spending, you know, a quarter, 25% of their fab on Foley. Uh, it, all the work out for you. Yeah, I hope so. Like uh, you, you have a, anybody that tells you they know what the heck they're doing, uh, you know, the Tigers are doing, unless they are the Tigers manager, has no idea. So, I mean, I can't even pro to tell you. I'm like, you know, so I hope the best for you. Just yeah. that's all I could tell you. Jamie, you wish you knew these players so you can join the conversation. You know what you should do? Next year, the Fantasy Six Pack Series, you should do like our producer, Mike LaPlante. Uh, never really played fantasy baseball before. He jumped in the league, did pretty well. Used our cheat sheet to do it. Um, and uh, he's just learning as he goes. Just, just gotta, just gotta rip the bandaid off, man. Just, just yeah. come do it. Just uh, this year, he asked me what a home run was. Mike did, <laughs> and I remember sitting there, and I'm like, you know what? You know, let me help you, son. So he learned what a home run was this year and a strikeout. So it's, it's a, uh, it's a learning process. <laughs> Oh, man. Don't you have to get a field goal first before you can get a home run? Yes, that's right. The strike, remember the strikeouts, the extra point after they make the field goal. <laughs> you guys are jerks. Thank all you. Right. God, now it's all coming together. I understand it. All right. Yeah, um, so, yeah, that is it for the show tonight, folks. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Um, I wish it was like, after because that's like a custom layout it doesn't like revert back to the like the default one which kind of sucks but uh yeah you're a custom funny. layout <laughs> a thick girthy whatever thick as death out like trout mike trout layout background uh. <laughs> i wish this was beer <laughs> i totally need it after listening to your bad jokes tonight, AJ. Ooh, um, that's right. That's right. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, subscribe, leave those comments. We appreciate it. Nice. That might have to go under the uh, testimonials on the, uh, on the website. <laughs> yeah. It's going to a testimonial on uh, you know, Dad's Twitter. That one. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, again, nice. hit that subscribe button, leave those comments. We appreciate it, and uh, of course, jump over to Fan Six Pack, become an All Access member, and uh, join us in our Discord and uh, talk to all of us. All right, have a mm -hmm. good night, everyone. All, all right. right, later.